So I've been wanting to design a USB powered exhaust fan for when I'm stealth car camping. This one should help with condensation a lot and also for protection against possible carbon monoxide or anything if I'm cooking in there. So the first step was getting a fan. And it just arrived today. Gorgeous little fan. USB power, it has three different settings. It's supposed to be really quiet. We'll check that in a minute. Actually, we'll check it right now. I've got a USB battery pack. Put that in. It's low speed. High is a little noisy, but I think I'm only going to use low once it's running. That's actually pretty quiet, especially when it's going to be inside and down from the open window a little bit. So let's turn that off, not all the way up. Uh, first thing, let's get these little silicone pads off because. I'm not going to need those. This is going to actually bolt into a 3D printed piece I'm going to make. That was great. Everyone survive? We will reuse this. Or at least one. See the fan. Yeah, this will be the outside. So that side will go back on. I've actually already started the design of this, but until I received this, I didn't know the actual dimensions. So let's figure out our whole pattern now. I would call that 2.825. All right, let's go to the computer and check out the 3D model. Here's our assembly. Now I just kind of made a blocky fan. I wasn't really sure about the dimensions. So let's open that first. And let's adjust these M4 clearance holes. make them are 2.825 there so. we'll go back to the assembly I'll have to adjust the holes in the 3d printed part Two point eight two five, and there. Now these holes will get brass inserts afterwards, so you can see the fan will sit here. The air will blow in, run up this channel, and out this exhaust. And this whole thing will sit over the window. You just roll the window up tight to it, and I'll just cut a little notch out of my window blackout pieces for the fan. So a quick update before we start printing. I added the tab for the on-off switch, and another tab to tie wrap the extra wire. And then, since I really don't want to use any support when printing this, I changed the exhaust port. 
to be like this, so when it prints, it's actually going to print this way. It's not going to need any support. So if we go back to the assembly, I also have the battery holder in here now. There'll be a separate print that'll bolt on. So here's our part in the Cura Slicer. I did the slicing. We're looking at 22 hours and 43 minutes with 222 grams of filament. A little bit longer than I thought, but I did make it a little bit thicker on the walls and more infill. So let's get that to the printer. Okay, just sliced the battery box for my other printer, and it is now saying 2 hours and 19 minutes. Okay, the sidewinder is chunking right along. But the Delta printer is almost done. You can't beat the speed of a Delta. And finally done. So it came out pretty good. All right, so the print turned out really nice. There's just some Little faint stringy pieces you get on there, a lot 3D printing. So the best way to get rid of that is a little bit of flame. Just lightly all over. Now, for these inserts, I'm going to use these brass inserts made for plastic. I found the best way to do that is get a long bolt, put that on there, and it's going to go 
right in like that. Let's see if I can get you a little closer. And we use the same torch. Okay, time to assemble. So, set our fan on. So our finger guard. And the battery holder. There we go. Now to use every maker's favorite connection method, hot glue. Little dabble do. And to hold the extra wire or run tie wraps to the Two little holes I designed into the 3D print. Oops. Okay, it's 7 a.m. It's time to start this test. So 10,000 milliamp hour battery. We'll set it on low. I'm just going to sit there and let it run all day, or at least until it stops. All right, so this thing has been going for 13 hours. And when this battery pack is fully charged, there's four lights. And right now... There are four lights! So I think what I'm going to do... Because on low, is more than enough for a single night stealth camp. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this test put this back on charge overnight just top it back off and then tomorrow I'm going to set this on high and see how long we get on high because I don't think you'd want to use this on high all night for a stealth camp but I just kind of want to get the data and then maybe we can kind of infer what medium and low would be because low Apparently, by the way it looks, you could go for days with this fan running. So, yep. Let's go ahead and stop it. Put this back on charge. And then tomorrow morning, we'll put it on high. I'll let it keep running. I'll take it with, to work with me. We'll see how many hours it'll run on high. Alright, it's 7 a.m. the next morning. And let's start this high speed test. Put it on high, 
I'm going to take it to work with me. So I can watch it all day. See how long this lasts. So the high speed's a little bit louder. But it puts out quite a bit of air. See, high speed would probably be good if you're cooking something in the car and want to get out the, the smoke, you know, if it get really smoky or stinky. So yeah, we'll see how this goes throughout the day. Okay, so it's now just after 1900 or 7 p.m. This thing's been running on high for 12 hours and 20 minutes. And it just went down to three lights on the battery pack. So looking like well over a day's worth of fan on high. This fan must be very efficient. Okay, so the cover's in, nice and snug. So basically what we'll do, I have a cutout here. Pull that down and drop the window. See, it's now open there. Now this will fit. And do this one-handed. Oh. So now, bring the window the rest of the way up. And it's tight. Still blocked off all around. Everything's blocked. Now plug in the battery pack and we turn it on. And even on high, it's not very loud. And from my testing, I think on high you'd probably get about 40 hours worth. And of course here, you can't see anything. It's really up under there. And you can feel the air coming out. It's not a lot. It's not meant to be a lot. It's just enough to keep air flowing a little bit so I won't have to worry at all about any carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, or any type of buildup like that. And when I cook in here, it'll get rid of some of the steam and smell. Which could be a double-edged sword if somebody's walking by and smells some delicious food being cooked, but we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. So, there we go. All set up.